Marvel Spider-Man 2 begins with seeing Norman and Harry talking two years before. Harry tells Norman that if the treatment doesn't work on him, to pull him out so he can say proper goodbyes to everybody. Norman responds saying he's not going to lose Harry as he then transfers him the symbiote. We then fast forward to present time with Peter doing his best to hold down a job, being a physics teacher at Miles' school. This doesn't last long as Miles noticed sand coming in from the window. He tries to handle the situation by himself, but he needs Peter's help. Peter ditches his job, and they both leave the school to confront Sandman. This leads us to a massive boss fight with Peter and Miles both attempting to reason with Marco, but he just wants to be left alone and says it's not about his anger towards them. Combining water and Miles' venom powers, they're able to defeat Sandman, but upon his arrest, he tells both the Spider-Men that they are the ones that are going to need help when they come for them, which leaves them confused. We then jump to Craven dispatching a great hunter, but experience expressing his frustration as he can't believe this is the best that they can come up with for him to hunt. One of his men shows him New York littered with more talented prey. We then jump back to Peter and Miles cleaning up the city following the aftermath of Sandman. When they make it back to the school, Peter is fired from his position. Peter then meets MJ at Aunt May's house, where MJ talks about her job at the Daily Bugle, but struggling to find her footing there. Once in the house, we find out Peter is in some serious money trouble after May mortgaged the house to help with feast. MJ offers to pay it, but Peter refuses. MJ finds a picture of Peter as a teenager, and when Peter goes to find where the picture was taken, we're treated to a flashback where Peter is listening to J. Jonah Jameson talking to a caller who's bashing Spider-Man. He gets mad and punches a hole in the wall in which May comes in to investigate and give him a little bit of wisdom in terms of dealing with too much at the same time. MJ tells Peter in the present time that some high-profile inmates are about to be transferred. She walks outside and we finally see Harry. Peter and Harry take a bike ride where they catch up on Miles, Doc Ock, and more. Harry takes Peter to their old high school where we go back in time yet again. We see Harry and Pete engage in some shenanigans, but the main part is as they escape the school, Norman shows up to tell Harry that his mother has just died. Harry pitches Pete in the present time, the Emily May Foundation, how Harry now has a second chance at life and that he wants to do something with it. We then see Craven arriving in town, eyeing that prison transfer for the next day. Then we jump to Miles, who is still struggling to write his college application essay. Peter calls him for help with the inmate transfer, and Miles couldn't be happier. But before he leaves, he's stopped by his mom, who tells him that she's been dating again and wants Miles to meet her partner. Miles accepts that and then leaves. The Spider-Men arrive at the prison transfer, where they see that Scorpion is the one being moved, but we also see that Martin Lee is being moved also, which sets Miles off. The transfer is disrupted by Craven and his hunter, and the Spider-Men do their best to stop them, but Scorpion escapes and is then captured by Craven as Miles goes through a hallucination. Miles then does his best to keep Lee from being captured, but ultimately needs to choose between revenge and saving the innocents at the pier, to which he chooses to save them. Now we jump to Miles meeting up with his uncle, Aaron Davis. Aaron tries to impart some wisdom on letting Lee go and moving forward, but Miles isn't very receptive to that. Back to Peter, who goes to the Emily May Foundation in person to hear what Harry has to say about it. Turns out Harry has taken the startup idea and already made it very, very real, and he wants Peter to join him. Peter accepts Harry's pitch to come on board, but he has to come up with an exit plan from being Spider-Man first. There are some side missions with some pretty meaty story content, so we will discuss those here as well, starting with Miles trying to get an interview with a college for a potential music career. Spider-Man business gets gets in the way, but he's able to win over Mr. Atlas enough for an in-person interview the following week for a scholarship. Back to Peter, he goes to investigate Craven's base, and we find out some background info on Craven. We see some of the technology he's working on, as well as his actual plan. He's not forming a super group with villains, he's hunting them for sport, with Black Cat also on his list. In these video files, we see Craven kill Scorpion as part of Peter's revelation as to what's going on. Another Another big side quest that we'll discuss as this video goes on is the flame cult, the cult of the flame. It's here we see Yuri as Wraith and her more direct style of handling things, including being okay with letting people die. Afterwards, we get another call from NJ, who's struggling to find out what Jameson wants from her articles. With Craven after Black Cat, 
Peter believes it's best to send Miles to her to warn her as she may not take him seriously. As Miles, we investigate Black Cat's last known locations to find the attack on her has already began. We also find out that Black Cat is in search of a magic-like wand that can transport its user wherever they want to go. Miles stops the attack on Black Cat and then the chase is now on. Miles catches her up to what's going on with Craven and they fight together to stop the attack. Black Cat reveals she needs that magic to reach her girl friend in Paris as she got her into a situation and she needs to be the one to get her out of it. Miles realizes that she's not always selfish and allows her to go and do it. On to a night at Coney Island where Miles first tries out Mysterio's newest experiment, bringing Miles's vision to life of him being a DJ. The machine goes awry and Miles has to fight his way out. This brings up a side quest line with Mysterio that you can do throughout the game. Now we switch to Peter, who enjoys a night out with MJ and Harry, riding rides and participating in carnival games. It's here we meet Tombstone again, who's working at the amusement park as a mechanic and has seemingly turned his life around. The trio go on to test their strength, and Harry breaks the game, showing Peter and MJ that something isn't quite right. On the Ferris wheel ride, we find that MJ's article wasn't picked as she's still struggling to write the right kind of story. The two share a kiss, but their night is interrupted by Craven's gang going after tombstone. Peter does his best to stop it, but ultimately needs to save civilians trapped on a roller coaster. And when all hope seems lost there, Harry comes to help using the power of the symbiote. Peter and Harry both now know what's going on with each other, and the group separates. Peter goes to meet with Harry to catch up on what's really been happening, with Harry testing out his powers and wondering why Peter seemingly told everyone but him about Spider-Man. They trash the room and are woken up by Norman shortly after. Jumping back to Yuri's arc, it starts to open up a bit with us being introduced to the cult's leader, who taunts Yuri and tells her his location, which Peter recognizes as a trap immediately. Back to the main story, Peter then attempts to save Tombstone, where he gets a call from Harry wanting to help him. Peter originally says no, but Harry comes anyway. The two fight their way through a compound, learn some of new Harry's powers, and ultimately save Tombstone. Upon leaving, they thank each other and go for a fist bump where the symbiote attaches itself to Peter just long enough to mimic his logo. Miles then visits his mom and struggles once again with letting Lee go. His mom also tells him about leaving the past alone and focusing on how to help others moving forward, to which Miles says he can't let Lee go. Next up is Peter receiving a call from MJ telling him the hunters have Connors and she knows where they're heading, but her phone is knocked out of her hand. While playing as MJ, we find out that Craven has also killed Vulture. MJ attempts to call Harry, but only manages it for a few seconds before the phone battery dies. She locates Connors, though, and sets off to try to free him. She manages to get to him, but Craven comes in as well, stopping her and injecting Connors to turn him into the lizard. Harry and Peter arrive to help MJ and Connors reach an antidote in time, but they're unsuccessful. Craven takes the antidote away from them, and while Peter attempts to stop Craven, Craven stabs him, massively wounding him. Harry jumps in and fights Craven as MJ helps Peter get to safety. While Peter's dying and MJ is helping him, we hear her tell her that he's sorry that he was always so busy. Harry wins his fight against Craven, but MJ calls him over as Pete stops breathing. The symbiote leaves Harry's body and attaches itself onto Peter, saving him in the process. Craven realizes how powerful the symbiote is and splits up his hunt on both Lizard and Peter. We fast forward to the next day where Peter attempts to give the symbiote back to Harry but it doesn't work. The three then come up with a plan to transfer the lizard back to normal so he can help Harry and the symbiote. Next up we jump to Peter attempting to enter a VIP party so he does his best Nathan Drake impression with a fancy tux and enters. Peter finds out Craven isn't there but Dima is. Peter finds where Craven actually is located and goes to challenge him. Craven gets the upper hand using the bell's noise but Peter gets the antidote around on Craven's neck. Peter and Harry engineer a cure for Connors, but the Emily May Foundation is destroyed by Craven's men in the process. We then jump to Miles, who's been attempting to reach Peter this whole time with no success. He visits his father's grave looking for some advice. He's very lost in the sense that all he wants is to find Lee, even at the cost of not helping anybody else. He snaps back to say if Peter isn't helping, he needs to be the one to do it and leaves his father's grave. 
It's important to note that during a craven centric side quest, we find out he doesn't have much time left and that he's dying. Keep that in mind for later. Jumping back to Yuri, she finds the leader of the flame and is about to kill him before Peter jumps in to stop her. This results in the two of them fighting and the leader escaping. Next up, back to the main story, Peter is investigating Connor's home, getting more and more angry that Craven would drag him and his family back into this life. This leads to the mission we saw the first time Insomniac ever showed us the game, a chase for Lizard over the water. Lizard ends up escaping, and Peter's attitude continues to change, largely blaming Lizard's escape on Miles. Peter continues his search and tells Harry that as soon as Connors gets the antidote, the suit is coming back to him. Harry doesn't seem all that convinced, and we see signs that he's once again getting sick. Searching for Lizard reveals that Connors has been studying the symbiote. After a lengthy fight with Lizard, Peter is able to change him back, where Connors tells Peter that the symbiote is an alien that he's been studying actually for a while. He tells him that it shows Peter, and it's more dangerous than he thought. The symbiote's also responsible for why Connors lost his arm. He wants to destroy it, to which Peter isn't happy, saying, destroy us. He tells Connors and makes him a better Spider-Man, and he leaves. On a swing out, he gets a call from MJ, where he continues to change, with MJ talking about his extreme chase with Lizard. Peter then arrives home and immediately falls asleep with the suit still on. Craven's army comes to capture him, and MJ is left to fend for herself. She escapes and calls Miles, as Peter has now seriously lost it. She follows Peter in a more horror-esque segment of the game, with Peter not trying to hurt MJ, but the symbiote is overpowering him, forcing MJ to use sound frequencies to knock him out. Miles does his best to buy MJ time from the outside, but he's captured by Craven, who will use him as bait to get to Peter. MJ wakes Peter up, but after that, he chases her out of the tunnel, Peter then wakes up the next day with no real memory of what just happened, but receives a call from Harry who really needs that suit back. Peter goes to check in on Harry, where MJ is also at. MJ and Harry tell him how the suit is changing him as Peter gets extremely mad. MJ had also just published an article shedding him in not the best light, which she says is the actual truth. Peter then leaves to find Norman struggling to find an alternate cure to Harry. He tells Peter he's so proud of him and he's loved watching him and Harry grow up together. Harry sees this from behind a wall and gets furious, breaking his window and kicking MJ out. Peter goes to Rio's house where she gives him a good talking to on what Peter means to Miles and all that Miles has been doing and demands that he finds Miles. Miles awakens trapped by Craven. He fights his way mostly out but ends up in a fighting pit having to fight Martin Lee to the death. Lee delves into Miles' mind to find out what he's really afraid of. He finds out that Spider-Man in this case is Miles, and Miles goes through a personal arc of his own, not learning to forgive Lee, but getting to a point where he's largely okay enough to let go of the past. He frees Lee and tells him to go find Spider-Man as he is left with Kraven. Peter then finds Lee where he catches them up on what just happened to Miles and also starting Lee's redemption arc. Lee tells Peter that he should also be proud of Miles and that he reminds him of Peter. Peter fights his way through Craven's base and eventually fights Craven himself. It's here we get the rest of his backstory. He's dying and wants to go out fighting his actual equal rather than, say, a hospital bed. This continues to make Peter angrier, but right as Peter goes to kill Craven, he stopped by Miles, leading to the next boss fight, Miles against Peter. During this fight, we hear just how much Peter needs the suit, how it makes him better, how he's tired of being a failure, and more. Miles ends up winning the fight and uses the bell to weaken the symbiote enough for Peter to rip it off of him. Peter thanks Miles and sets off to Dr. Connors to destroy the now-trapped symbiote. He tells Miles that Norman's alternate cure can be used on Harry and not the alien. Peter calls MJ and they start to build their relationship back, with Peter apologizing for what he's done, but knowing it's going to take more time. Next up, Peter goes to talk to Connors, but runs into Harry instead. Peter tells him they need to destroy the symbiote and that he doesn't want Harry to lose himself like he did. In the fight between them, the symbiote breaks out and latches itself on to Harry, transforming him into what we know as Venom. Norman sees the end of this and instructs his men to get the symbiote off of Harry, and we are then treated to playing as Venom himself.
himself, utterly destroying Norman's men and leaving Oscorp. But once he leaves, he's surrounded by Craven and his men, which leads us to fighting Craven again. This time, though, Venom actually finishes it off by biting Craven's head off. Peter goes on the hunt for Harry and finds that he's been transforming average citizens to his army. He's also told by Miles that Craven has been killed. Miles has an idea to clone the sound of the bell to be used on everybody large scale and to stop Harry. Peter and Miles then attempt to stop Venom and see how he transforms people. They fight their way through his army and into the subway to save Rio and Genki. To finish up the Yuri quest line, we find out that the leader of the cult is Cletus Cassidy, who orchestrated a train crash to steal another strain of the symbiote from Oscorp. He even drops the name Carnage. We then jump to MJ back in the main missions, having a meeting with Jameson, where he tells her that the article she wrote was amazing, and that's what he wants going forward. Forward. She struggles with this and is then interrupted by Harry knocking at her door. Peter goes to rescue her and is then lectured by Harry again about healing the world and wanting Peter to do it with him. We finally get the iconic We Are Venom line, and then Venom transforms MJ into Scream. Next up is a boss fight between Peter and Scream where we get MJ's side of what's been going on, with everything being about Peter, her role in everything, and her job. Through MJ's cues, Peter is able to weaken Scream enough for MJ to rip the symbiote off of her. The two have a touching moment, and MJ calls Jameson to quit her job. On the way to the next mission, Peter tells Miles through a phone call that Connors told him he may have had the suit on for too long and that a part of it could still be inside Peter. We then jump to Peter and Miles fighting another army but being overwhelmed. Martin Lee ends up saving them but needs to help fix Peter, so him and Miles jump into Peter's mind to rid him of what's left of the symbiote. In his mind, we see Peter's guilt with putting away so many people only to have them escape and cause more harm, including a moment with a Sinister Six. Diving to the center of Peter's problems is also his guilt towards not being able to save Aunt May. They eventually find the source, but are unable to cleanse it by their normal means. Instead, Lee says he will transfer all his power into it, ridding what's inside of Peter, but unsure of what it'll do to him. Him and Miles have what they feel could be their final talk, where Miles says he won't forgive Lee, but he wants him to set things right, and he has his back. The plan works, Lee loses his powers, but Peter gains the powers and suit of anti-venom. Miles catches Peter up with what just happened, and they thank Lee. Lee reflects on his downfall, but also the good that's still in him, and the conversation ends with Lee making things right the way of the Spider-Men, which includes turning himself into the police. Another side mission to throw in real fast is the Spider-Bot arc. This ends with a confirmation of the multiverse, with Miguel's name even dropped in a cutscene. Back to the normal story, we get Harry and Venom talking to Norman and going after Connors. Venom wants the meteorite and ends up getting his hands on both halves of it. Spider-Man is told by Norman to save Harry, while Connors tells him that it's too late, that Harry and the symbiote have bonded perfectly, and the only way to take out Venom is to kill Harry. Venom unleashes the symbiote on the city as Peter exits the lab. Upon reuniting with Miles, we see he has created his own suit, a Miles Morales original, as he calls it. Peter catches Miles up to what needs to be done, with Peter saying he's unable to kill Harry. Miles tells Peter about what he saw with May and what she and his dad would do if they were still around, to help people and to fight. They both go looking for the meteorite, and Miles is dragged into the hive mind, allowing him to see that Haley is in trouble as well as where the meteorite is. He tells Peter to wait for him while he helps Haley, but Peter doesn't listen. Miles goes on to save Haley and even asks her out on a date. Haley says that while she has a busy schedule, they'll make it work. Back to Peter in the subway, he tries to catch up with Harry as Venom taunts him. Finally, he reaches Venom to be told that he still wants Peter to help heal the world. Peter escapes, and he, Miles, and MJ meet at May's house to come up with a final plan. The plan is that Venom slash Harry still wants Peter above all else. So Peter will lure Venom away, while MJ will retrieve the meteorite, and Miles will distract the enemies that are still there. They'll drop the rock in the accelerator at the Emily May Foundation and destroy it. In the meantime, Peter will try to disconnect the symbiote from Harry. MJ's part works as she fights through the symbiote enemies and retrieves the rock. Her and Miles head to the accelerator. 
Peter goes on to battle Venom in a multi-stage boss fight, and Peter does okay, but once Venom realizes the rock has been taken, he overpowers Peter and flies off with him to go get it. Venom interrupts the accelerator process, and now it's up to Miles to battle him. In this fight, we hear the jealousy of Harry slash Venom for taking Peter away from them. Taking the battle to the sky, Peter and Miles buy as much time as they can, while also tearing away Venom enough for Harry to tell Peter that he's done fighting and for Peter to kill him. The trio is able to get the accelerator working and the rock is destroyed, freeing the city and killing the symbiote that was on Harry. But because of this, Harry also dies, at least for a moment. Miles is able through his powers to bring him back to life, but not all the way. On their way carrying Harry out, they run into Norman, who resents the two of them for what they did to his son. We then jump to a doctor telling Norman that although Harry is alive, his chances of ever waking up are extremely slim, to which Norman gets extremely mad. Peter and MJ leave the room, and we see Norman making a call saying to get the G-Serum ready ASAP. We then jump to MJ doing a podcast of her own called The New Normal. Peter shows MJ he's starting up the Emily May Foundation on a much smaller scale in their garage, but because of this, he isn't going to be Spider-Man anymore. He tries to tell Miles this, but Miles finishes the thought for him. Miles tells Pete that he's got this and will be able to handle it all, saying he'll call for advice if Peter allows it and telling him to go be Peter Parker for a while. They fist bump and Miles is then off. We then jump to the mid credit scene where Norman goes to talk to Otto at the raft. He knows Otto knows who the Spider-Men are and asks for info, saying that they destroyed or ruined his son. Otto responds saying that it's good that he experienced loss, and Norman asks what he's been writing in his book, and Otto tells him it's the final chapter. And then finally, we go to the post credit scene where Miles is showing Haley his essay. They are then interrupted by a knock at the door where we see who Rio has been dating, a man named Albert Moon and his daughter Cindy, a.k.a. Silk, in the Spider-Man universe.